Hello, good morning and welcome to Eden. Uh, I've just been going over to uh, Joe's side there, having a chat with him. And he's given us some more, um, some more of those little paving stones. These little paving stones. Um, so all together we'll have 63 of the 9 inch paving stones. Which is good, isn't it? I've just got to get them planted in now. And do the patio. Mm. Finish off some of the paths, etc. So uh, that's what. Uh, well, it's not what we're going to be going on with today, to be honest with you. Um, today I'm going to be planting on the the brassicas, and I'm going to be hanging up some uh, Virginian tobacco leaves that Mick's given us. So without further ado, we'll crack on, and I'll see you in a bit. All right, boys and girls. Bye bye. So this is tobacco leaf. that mix been growing. So we're going to hang that up and see if we can dry it out to uh, to be used further down the line. I'm quitting smoking. I do smoke, but I'm quitting smoking. So that'll be a gift really for somebody who uh, isn't quitting smoking. It'd be natural tobacco anyway. So uh, a lot less chemical action going on. Not exactly going to be healthy for them, but <laughs> It's not going to be as uh, as toxic as uh, as some of the commercial stuff that you buy in cigarette form. I've just put a cane there up in the rafters in the tiki hut. Um, I've just had a look online and people sort of hang it up in the lofts of barns and stuff like that, the tobacco. So I'm just going to tie it onto there. So it's spine of the leaf to spine of the leaf is what we think. Never done it before. Mick's never done it before either. But, um, so yeah, the, the, the back of the leaf to the back of the leaf like that. And I'm going to hang it up there. So I'll crack on with that actually. See how that looks. There we go. Our friends the slugs like it. They're keen on tobacco. You can imagine them chewing it, can't you? Like some western cowboys. Ding! A bit of spittoon at the side. Um, yeah, so I'm going to leave that there, just hung up. See what happens with it. Let it dry out a bit. When it goes sort of a yellowy brown, and then it goes to a to, to like a pure tobacco colour, which is a sort of golden brown colour, um, we'll take it from there. I've never done it before. I've never done the tobacco or anything before. So, if any of you uh, you guys know how to do it, you guys stateside, then please put in the comments below. Right then, winter brassicas. We've got the purple sprouting broccoli there. And we've got the uh, spring hero, spring cabbage there. And I've also got some more kale, the winter boar kale. So we need to get it planted on that. They're looking a bit sorry for themselves. They've been out of the water for about 10 days. So the roots will be getting the fine hairs on them now to seek out that water and nutrition. So they need to be planted on. Now, my idea is I'm going to plant them on into the uh, Tesco buckets like these ones. And leave them, uh, leave six of them growing on in here, growing on in here. But to do that, I need to make some space and some room. So I'm going to take those out. These are the um, a Casablanca garlic, which are a winter garlic, and also the winter onion in the in the shape of the senshu, Japanese overwintering onions. They're going to be going out. So I'm going to get those outside. I'm going to try and get them outside under a bit of cover so they don't get too devastated by uh, the cold winds and extreme temperatures and, and buffeting and what have you. But they are going to go outside. They can survive easily outside. And they're probably being mollycoddled inside the, inside the polytunnel. So I'm going to get them out. That's our Brad's cage. And uh, <clears throat> so I've put them inside there. There's three of the um, onions at the back. Uh, sorry, the, uh, yeah, the onions. No, the garlic at the back, into the garlic at the back, which is the Casablanca, and then the Japanese Senshu. There, and it's on the gangway. There's a gangway uh, that goes down the middle there, uh, sort of a ten-inch gangway that goes down the middle there, and those are the upside-down um, garlics. That's the upside-down and right-way-up bulb experiment we're doing on the garlics that we're doing with Horty Hugh. And Terry King, the upside down ones on the left and the right way ups on the right. Garlic planted upside down 
planted right way up and you can see there that after four weeks I think it's about four weeks now yeah four weeks there doesn't seem to be much difference between the two is there? right anyway so they're all in there now that should offer them a little bit of protection from the the icy winds Let me get them inside the It'll go in properly. Don't know why that's not going in properly. It should do. I'll put it the wrong way around. Yeah. Good camera work, this, isn't it? Highly entertaining. Right. The woods expanded, boys and girls. That's better. Like that, and that'll keep any uh, pesky critters out, and they'll hopefully be okay inside there, inside that cage. I'm not using the land in there over winter, I'm leaving it fallow and I'm leaving it weedy. I'll just thoroughly weed it come springtime in about two months or so, because those weeds are not going to go rampant over the next, uh, over the next uh, winter months, the next three winter months. They should be okay in there up until the uh, end of February but I'll keep an eye on it if they are going to be uh, a problem I'll take them out but uh, the beauty of that putting them on the gangway in there is that I can just lift the buckets out and take them out go in do what I need to do and then put the buckets back in no problems at all so I've just been to uh, Mother Earth's and she's given us that which is a stone effect planter We've also got the shelving here. I'm going to rejig a little bit in the tiki hut. She's down there, Mother McCree, at the front. Um, get that in the tiki hut. Yeah, watch this. They're all hiding under here. Look at them. That's like Snail City. Let me get them all out and I'll show you. Look at them, Snail City. I'll get them all out of here. Time for a flying lesson for the, for the snails, watch. Be free! I do find I'm a little bit more lenient towards the snails than I am to the slugs. I think it's because the, the snails are cuter. So the snails tend to get flying lessons into the woods over there. And, uh, and the slugs get swimming lessons into the bucket down there. And they, they, they never really learn though, the slugs. They're not, uh, they're not natural swimmers. All right, so this is kind of a hidden doorway, really, to the outside uh, patio area. We've never used it. And to be honest with you, I think it's wasted space inside the shed. I don't need it. I'm never going to have a, such a fire here that I can't escape. So um, I'm going to put the shelf in there, if it'll fit. I'm hoping that it'll fit into the... Let's get our fingers crossed and see if it does. We'll have to clear all of this out to get it in. Look at that, that's the perfect size that, fitted more or less bang on into that little alcove or doorway. And if you look there, these shelves, the depth of these shelves are the perfect size for our um, milk bottles, our six pint milk bottles which we put the, uh, the feed into, we put the liquid feed into that, the comfy feed and the um, the nettle that's going to be ideal that I've had to take that out my little seed um, uh, shelves cabinet, whatever you want to call it chest of drawers um, but that is, is absolutely ideal 
Like I said, we never use that door anyway, so it's, uh, it's surplus to requirements. It's going to be remaining locked like that. And then on the outside, if I'm going to leave it like that, on the outside I'm going to put the um, uh, strawberry planters. I think it's ace, that. Thanks, thanks Mother McCree. Spot on. That would have gone down the tip. But it's been reused, repurposed and recycled. Right, so we've got an hour to get these into pots. So it's all the Sutton Dwarf broad beans, the um, purple sprouting broccoli, and the remainder of them F1 Hero spring cabbage. So we've got an hour to get them in. You reckon we'll do it? I think so. All right, so what we're looking at there is our components. So um, we've got the uh, Sutton Dwarf broad beans there, which is sort of winter hardy jobbies. That's um, £3.25 worth of bucket that I've just purchased from Paul Green Nurseries. If you've already got them, that'll cost you nothing, obviously, but if you haven't, £3.25. They were uh, done from seeds, they'll probably cost, we'll call that the extra 25p. So that's £3.50. We're going to be using about 50p's worth of the um, blood fish and bone that I'm going to be scooping up in that. There'll be um, five scoops of that going in. And then we've got that, which is, it works out to about £3.70 a bag. And we're going to be using two fifths of that. So two, th two fifths of £3.70. About two quid, is it? Something like that, two pounds? Is it? Something like that? Two, about, around two pounds, about two pounds, one pound ninety ish, something like that. Two pounds, we'll call it two pounds. Two pounds, three twenty five, that's five twenty five, six seventy five, half a bag of that. That'll be seven twenty five. I'm calling another 25p for them, so yeah, seven pound fifty. That's with the with buying that as well. If you've already got one of them 30 litre buckets, you're all right. Uh, and of course, we can reuse all the compost that we're putting in there. So everything that we're putting in there will be reused afterwards. So uh, and, and as as will the bucket. The only thing that won't be reused is uh, the Sutton Dwarf beans, the broad beans. Right, let's crack on. Now the guru is usually pretty uh, good at arithmetic on the fly, but it's, uh, it's the second time in two days he's messed that up. I've just done the maths on that and it's um, £1.47 for the compost, because it's £11 divided by three, yeah, three bags for £11, and then it's two-fifths of that, which comes to £1.47, £1 and then you've got 50 pence worth of blood, fish and bone, 50 pence worth of vermiculite, £3.25 for the bucket and then about 28p for the Sutton Dwarf uh, beans and that comes to £5.90 so if you, did, if you deduct the bucket off that off the £5.90 that comes to um, £2.65 yeah £2.65 if you've already got the bucket. All right, catch you later. Right, so we're gonna be trying to get all 10 of these plants into the, so um, the first pot of the three and a half inch pots that we've got there, the first pot has got four in. So I'm gonna put that centrally, the others, um, the other three have only got the two in. So hopefully we'll be able to get 10 in there, I'm guessing, so that's the first one. And we use the pot as a uh, as a relief template if you like as always take them out of there and pop that into there so we carefully upend that tap it on its bum and lift it out and then pop it into there look at the root mass on that that's the one with the four beans in so that's going to be going into there like so and then we're going to put his friends around the sides of him so uh I'm thinking one there, one there, and one there maybe. Um, yeah, well, we'll get them in, see what it looks like. All right, so there's 13 Sutton Dwarf broad bean plants in there. Um, I'm just going to go and get some water for them so we can bed them in. Just about three litres is needed really, just to bed them in. All right.
That's just a bed I'm in. And that's the final, uh, the final piece, the final task, getting the bucket base on top. What that cage will do is allow our Sutton Dwarf broad beans to climb up there and they'll know the way, they'll show them the way, the stairway to heaven. They only grow to about three feet anyway, so it's probably not going to be even hitting the top part of it. Um, so yeah, they'll be fine in there. Job will be a good one. Let's get that back into the uh, into the tiki tunnel. There they are, all at the back. All our little climbers. So we've got the dwarf French bean in the middle, and the meteor peas either side. And uh, oh, they look all right, aren't they? Not too bad. Let's get the rest of them over that side now. I'm going to fill it up with water actually. It's about halfway with the water in the trays. Okay, give them a drink and away they go. Okay, I'm afraid that's it for today because we've got to go and pick my sister up from school. She's a teacher and uh, a car's bust, so we're going to go and rescue her and uh, we'll finish off with the brassicas and stuff tomorrow. All right, boys and girls, I'll see you later on. Have a good evening. And see you. If I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. This has been Gordon Mafinda signing out. And remember, we love you all. And uh, you're ace. The lot of you, you're ace. Catch you after. Bye bye.